If you've ever started a Minecraft world with a random seed, those adventures you've had might not be unique to you. From summiting a vast mountain, discovering diamonds deep in a cavern, to even stumbling upon that elusive enchanted golden apple hidden deep within a dungeon, there is a very real chance someone around the globe has had the exact same experience, and I'm going to prove to you that this has happened before and will happen again. But first, you need to understand that computers by design cannot generate truly random numbers with an emphasis on the word truly. Enter the world of pseudo-random numbers. A pseudo-random number generator starts with a value called a seed and performs a complex algorithm to generate effectively random numbers from this starting value. However, as this algorithm is deterministic, this means that when we use the same seed, we will always generate the same numbers out of the algorithm every single time. A well-designed algorithm should mean that even a slight change to the initial seed will produce an unpredictable different sequence of random numbers. Many languages, including Java, give quick and easy ways to generate a random seed. When you instantiate the random class in Java without specifying a seed, it rather uses unpredictable things such as the current system's uptime in nanoseconds. Remember, even changing the seed by one number completely changes the output from a random number generator. Predicting the current system's uptime in nanoseconds, when one second is one billion nanoseconds, is effectively impossible. This level of randomness is good enough for Minecraft. You may be familiar with the first seed from Minecraft. Starting out with the same seed, you always generate the same Minecraft world each time. If you don't specify a seed, a random one is generated for you using similar methods as Java's random utility. Minecraft then utilizes that seed to do anything within Minecraft that requires randomness. This gives predictability while maintaining the concept of each world being random. Internally, a Minecraft seed is stored as a 64-bit signed binary integer. You can generate a Minecraft world by putting a string into the seed box. However, on world creation, this value is converted into a number and treated as one thereafter. So we will just be focusing on the numbers. If the phrase 64-bit signed binary integer means nothing to you, then all you need to know is an integer is a whole number without decimals or fractions. Binary means it's made up of exclusively ones and zeros. A bit is a single one or zero, meaning we're working with 64 of them here. The fact it's signed means the first bit indicates whether the number is negative or not. Using these limitations, we can represent any whole number from minus 9 quintillion to 9 quintillion. And that's it. So what's the odds that someone else has generated the exact same Minecraft seed as you? We can represent 18 quintillion different seeds. So that means we have 18 quintillion different unique inputs into our random number generator, with each one of those producing a random set of outputs which then goes on to generate a random world in Minecraft. So what's the odds of two random people generating the exact same seed in Minecraft? First, we need to estimate how many worlds have been generated. In March 2022, Mojang removed the statistics endpoint from their API. This used to return an accurate count of the current sales of Java Edition Minecraft. The latest value showed that there was 45.6 million Minecraft Java Edition accounts, and with the popularity of Minecraft still being high, I suspect this value now would be way higher than 50 million at a minimum. For simplicity, I'm going to assume there is 50 million unique players. Next, we need to estimate how many worlds the average player generates. Between the users that purchase the game and never even generate their own single player world, to the powerhouse speedrunners like the Camo 6 who generate multiple worlds at a time trying to find a perfect seed, generating over 2.4 million worlds by himself, I'm going to arbitrarily choose a value that the average player generates is 100. I personally know I have generated hundreds if not thousands of random worlds in my years of playing the game. Multiplying these two values gives our estimate of 5 billion worlds generated in Minecraft. First, let's calculate the chance someone else has generated one of your world seeds in Minecraft. Let's calculate the chance somebody doesn't generate your seed whenever they generate a world. Out of the 18 quintillion seeds that they can randomly be assigned, 100 of those are yours. This means that when one world is generated, it has an 18 quintillion minus 100 over 18 quintillion chance of matching one of yours. This value is effectively one due to the sheer size of 18 quintillion compared to 100. However, we then need to multiply this number by itself 5 billion times and then take its complement and we get the chance that someone has generated the same world as you as being about 0.0000027%. Alright, that seems small, stick with me here. But what's the chance that this has happened before to two players in Minecraft? This essentially is an instance of a birthday paradox, which despite its name isn't a paradox. In the birthday paradox, it is mathematically shown that with just 23 people in a room, there is a 50% chance of at least two people sharing the same birthday. This seems counterintuitive, but it's due to the fact that with every new person, there is an increased chance the next person will share a birthday with the increasing amount of people before them. You can calculate it like this. The first person has a 100% chance of having a unique birthday. The second has a 364 over 365 chance of having a unique birthday. The third is 363 out of 365, all the way down to the 23rd person, which has a 343 out of 365 chance of having a unique birthday. 
If the chances of these all happening in a row means we can just multiply each of these by itself, and we end up with a value of it being roughly about a 50-50. This formula can be simplified to this. Our problem works the same, but rather than having 365 different unique days to pick from, we have 18 quintillion seeds, and rather than having 23 people in the room, we have 5 billion generations. By the way, I want to point out that we're calculating 18 quintillion factorial here. This number by itself has 300 quintillion digits. There's not anything in our universe that can quantify how big of a number this is. I'm not even going to try. Evaluating this quite elegantly gives us that there's a 50% chance that there's at least one pair of people out there who have generated and potentially played on the exact same seed. But the title is about you. So did I lie to you? Are you effectively guaranteed a unique seed? Maybe a unique seed, but not necessarily a unique world. Let me explain. Minecraft uses two random generators, a custom one, which takes 64 bit seeds and therefore produces truly unique random values for every unique seed, and Java's default random number generator. Java's default random utility, however, is limited to 48 bit seeds. When a 64 bit seed is fed into Java's random class, the first 16 bits are chopped off. This means that there are only 2 to the 48 unique seed combinations, and for every unique seed, there's 2 to the 16 minus 1 sister seeds that exist. Inputting any of these 65,000 sister seeds into Java's random utility will produce the same output every single time. Some things in Minecraft, such as biomes, are based upon Minecraft's custom 64-bit random number generator. This means that you get a truly unique biome experience for every single unique seed. However, other things in Minecraft, including structures, the terrain within the biome, chest loot, are fed into Java's 48-bit random number generator. This leads to shared behaviour between each sister seed, which includes the same caves, structures, and if the biomes match up to be the same at one place, the world will look identical. This is really interesting by itself, and can be abused for example in set speed speedruns. If one seed contained a ruined portal, for example containing the perfect amount of obsidian for a nether portal, you have an additional 65,000 seeds you can look at that all have the exact same ruined portal with the same loot. This means if you want to have a truly unique Minecraft experience, you'll need the last 48 bits of your seed to be unique. So going back to our original equations, we can replace our 2 to the 64 value with 2 to the 48. This gives us a very plausible 0.2% chance of this happening, meaning every 1 in 250 players would have had this happen to them. If you know you've generated more than the average 100 worlds per player, your chances are increased tremendously. For example, if you assume you've generated 1000 worlds, you have a nearly 2% chance of this collision occurring, meaning for veteran players it's more about a 1 in 20 have had this collision. Well that's all I have to say and I hope I've taught you something new. This is actually my first video, so I'd appreciate any feedback in the comments or any other topics you would want to hear me ramble on about. Thank you.